Welcome to the second session of a study that I have called Back to the Basics. Last week I told you the story of my conversion. I was a teenager going to high school back in Scotland. But when I committed my life to following Jesus Christ, I was about 15 years of age and very uninformed about what it really meant to live a Christian life in this day and age. So I said to those who were helping me, I asked this simple question. Okay, I've committed my life to Jesus Christ. What do I do now? And they gave me a simple answer. They said there are four basic practices that you need to have if you're going to build a strong Christian life. These four basic practices are like four pillars. And on these four pillars you build your Christian life. If the pillars are weak, what you build will be very shaky. The four basic practices, they said, were first of all prayer, learn to pray. Secondly, read the Bible. Thirdly, become involved in a local Christian fellowship or church. And lastly, publicly become a witness and a testimony for Jesus Christ. These are the four basics. Today, we are going to look at the first of these and talk about prayer. When they said I was to pray, I realized that I was not yet even in kindergarten when it came to praying. I do not remember ever praying privately myself to God in my whole life prior to my conversion. Now this was a long time ago and back in Scotland and in those days at school uh, we prayed together. So I can remember as a little boy in class at the end of the school day we all stood, we closed our eyes, we put our hands together and uh, we prayed. Jesus, tender shepherd, hear me. Bless thy little lamb tonight. Through the darkness be thou near me. Keep me safe till morning light. Amen. And with Amen we were free and we could run out and enjoy life as it should be. Hallelujah. I also learned the Lord's Prayer, of course, uh, and recited it. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. I'd heard prayers prayed in the church. But as far as me personally, addressing God and trying to come into his presence and pray, I cannot remember ever doing that. So I was starting right at the beginning. When they said I was to pray, I decided I would pray at night. They recommended the morning, but I'm not very good in the morning. So I decided I would pray at night before I went to bed. And fortunately, I had a bedroom to myself. So I went up to my bedroom, knelt by my bed, closed my eyes and prayed. I really cannot remember much of what I said those first two or three days in attempting to pray. But I very quickly realized that in praying I was opening a door to a whole new experience that I'd never had before. It was rich, it was beautiful, 
it was wonderful. Starting to pray, <clears throat> I quickly realized that I had to approach God with the right attitude. I couldn't go jumping into bedroom and quickly kneel by my bed and say a few quick words and jump into bed and say I prayed. I was approaching God and if you're approaching somebody important in the world, approaching somebody important, you really prepare for that meeting. You dress yourself, you groom yourself, you think of what you're going to say. And so God is a very important person. So I early realized I had to have an approach to prayer that would prepare me for the prayer time. I did some simple things, body language if you like. I made a little ceremony of closing my bedroom door at night. When I closed that bedroom door, I was saying, it's the end of the day, I'm shutting the world out, it's just me and God in here. And when I knelt, I realized that that too is body language. You, you kneel when you are before somebody who is greater than you are. Kneeling is a physical symptom of humility, bowing before somebody great. And when you kneel, you are saying in body language that you are kneeling before somebody great. You close your eyes because your eyes tend to distract you and you see all kinds of things around you. So you close your eyes to shut the world out and focus inner, focus in your own heart, focus to the condition and state of your own spirit. You look inward and become conscious of your inner spiritual being. For that is really where we talk to God. In the approach to prayer, I also read the Bible. It's very important, and in fact we'll take a whole week next week to talk about this, so I'll only quickly say that I read the Bible because it kind of brought my mind away from the world and away from the affairs of the day and all the concerns of a teenage boy and focused them on God spiritual life and my walk with God, it kind of brought my thoughts and attention to spiritual things. So I read the Bible and then I made a definite attempt to focus and concentrate inward, becoming inwardly aware of my spiritual state becoming aware of God's presence, conscious of his nearness. It took some concentration, but that was the preparation for prayer. Very important, I think, that we approach God and we're, a prayer, and we're prepared to do it. I began my prayer times with a time of worship. I didn't rush in and tell God all my needs and all the things I wanted. I, I knelt before him and focused on him as the Great One, the Holy One. Often I would, I would sing a hymn or go over the words in my mind that began to express the very feelings of my own heart. It was a matter of focusing on the greatness and wonder of God. Sometimes I would say, Thank you, O my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit till the work on earth is done. 
for some of the great hymns of the church, uh, I would say, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning my song shall rise to you, Holy, 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 Merciful, Mighty, God in three persons, Blessed Trinity. Yeah, take the hymn book with you to your prayer time and sing or say the words because they express so beautifully the Christian feelings towards God. You say, well, but I, I, I can't, I'm not very good at singing. Well, it, it doesn't have to be an, an opera presentation. It's just you and God. And really, when you think about it, God is responsible for giving you the voice you've got. So he's in no position to complain. So sing, or go the words over, but worship and praise God. A time of worship, a time of praise, a time of thanksgiving. A wonderful time. If your spirit touches God and you're in his presence, Linger here. Don't, don't rush through this. You can't rush through this. Let the emotions roll. I very early felt for the very first time in my life during this worship time the great joy, the unspeakable waves of joy that rolled over my soul. You know, I was a teenager. And I'd, I'd had a good life. I had uh, enjoyed myself. I had lots of pleasures that I partake in. I'd had fun. It was good. But nothing like the joy that rolled over my soul in God's presence, what the Apostle Peter calls a joy unspeakable and full of glory. So in the worship time, let your emotions roll. Let your feelings come out, and sometimes it will be a great peace, sometimes a great joy, sometimes a great humility, but you're in the presence of God, and it's wonderful. After the time of worship, I thought, now I have a lot I want to say to God, but he also knows me very well. And he probably has some things he wants to say to me. So I tried to have a time of listening to God. Really, the important thing is, is not in, in prayer is not just asking God for stuff. It is the fellowship, the communion, the interaction with your spirit, with his spirit, and he probably has some things he'd like to say to you that would help you and make you a better person. So I quickly learned that you don't listen very well when you're talking. So in order to listen, you have to stop talking. And God speaks in the quietness while you're focused on him. And he speaks with not, not a voice, not an audible voice, but he speaks with inner impressions, coming to you with an inner awareness of what he wants, what he has to say, and how he wants you to live. Prayer is mostly learning to receive what God wants to give. And God wants to give a lot. But what he wants to give more than anything else is himself. And so during this time of listening, you look inward. What does your heart want more than anything else? What is the great hunger of your spirit? And you begin to absorb God and absorb his presence and absorb his love and peace and strength and joy. Whatever you need, 
he can provide. Again, linger here. Don't rush. Take your time. After listening to God, I then had some things that I wanted to ask him and things I wanted to pray about. Usually I started with the things that concerned me the most and I was most uh, felt most strongly about, whatever they are. And you don't have to feel like these things have to be all spiritual. They can be very mundane, earthly concerns of everyday life, but start talking to God about them. Then you pray for others. Pray for your family, for your friends, for the church, for the leaders in our country, but pray for others. Mostly ask for the things that burden you and concern you the most. You may think some of them are not spiritual, but it's you who are praying and it's your life and you're the one who are talking to God. So you tell him what is on your mind and what is on your heart. So ask God. Jesus told us to. He said, ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. So have a time of asking God for the things that are on your heart. And then I closed my prayer time just with a very brief thanksgiving, an expression of faith, and a recommitment of my loyalty. And that's how I began to develop my prayer life. Approach to prayer, listening to God, a time of worship, and a time of petition and asking. It's quite simple. But it opened a door to a wonderful world of spiritual experience. So I urge you, if you want to develop your Christian life, the first great pillar is learning to pray. God bless you. And next week we will talk about the second of these basic essentials, and that is God's Word, the Bible. Thank you, and God bless.